But it is possible to climb up trees with spurs on without actually spurring them if you're careful. There's lots of branches on this tree. I'm going to need the spurs on the tree behind us that we're taking down. So um, you just have to be careful. Oh, you suppose you could have them sent up, but I'm I'm on my own here, so uh, so it was easier just to put them on. So the tree we've tied into has been topped in the past. It's not very good union. This one, this is the one I'm tied to, but I've not gone very high on purpose, so there's very little leverage going to be on it. Notice too that on the way up I cut off lots of dead stubs. It's when you're traversing into another tree but remaining tied to a remote one, you've got to consider, you know, if you whether accidentally on purpose or on purpose take a swing back into the tying tree. These Douglas firs have a tendency to shed limbs and they live, leave really kind of up to a foot length spikes that kind of peels over and leaves a really sharp stub. So it's uh, something to remember, if it takes a little bit of extra time just cleaning off those bits, it's, it's worth it just in case you do take a swing back. You don't want to be stabbed by one of those uh, sharp stubs. So um, I'll just swap cameras now. So there's the dead tree behind us. It's far enough that I could uh, probably reach out and sort of swing and grab it, but um, because it's close, it actually makes it a good demo tree for the grappling hook. So I like to keep mine in a bag. I know some people sort of like to coil the line up around the hook itself but um, I, I'm sort of favour putting things in bags and just flaking it in there. So ideally um, this is ready to throw now. Good thing about this style hooks is that there's three points of contact and they're not hook, you know it's not a an acute shaped hook so it can snag its way into all kinds of forks that you wouldn't be able to with just a conventional hook. Um, as you throw it the wings fold in or the hooks so, so it's quite uh, aerodynamic and good at piercing through gaps and then when it falls the other side it opens and snags the limb. So you can carry it when you're throwing it obviously you, you anchor it to the bottom or just the top if you're carrying it so um, the, the hooks aren't going to snag anything. So if you're watching this and you're thinking oh I could just reach out and grab that easy that's not the fucking point as I've just explained. Don't bother making that comment. This is the demo and it's a good tree to demo on because it is so close. So ideally you want to go over the top limb and snag it on something underneath. Just adds a bit of friction and um, it means as well if your line angle changes let's say you drop down and move across then this though the hook is it doesn't align itself with the line pointing down it stays over the redirect so you can obviously use hand ascenders or foot ascenders to pull yourself across it's a short distance so I don't need either If you can't go over a branch and hook it on another one, you've got to decide whether you think it's safe to jam it in a fork.
I think that bottom one's good enough. As you can see we've got a bit of movement on the tree already. So it's not a bad idea to, before I commit myself, to just unclip and just give it a wiggle. And just see, is it going to be safe? For me to get into. I'm a little bit dubious. See the bend there, full of pecker holes. So I think I'll get away with it. What you gotta remember when you're loading the um, when you tied in remotely and you're trying to keep your weight in the tying tree on a skinny target tree like this you pull yourself across and you may be put in the favor of the tree towards where you're tied in so you got to remember that when you're cutting a breakaway lanyard would be handy on this or a weak point on your belt to um, tie into in case it fails you don't want to get dragged down see so that top now is poking my way yeah this is rotten I wouldn't say this is a very safe tree to climb, but not one I'd advise, but I'll get away with it. So the guy has a few small trees down there, that's why we can't cut anything big. So, probably the safest place is right across into that other fir tree. Hope it doesn't smash our boots or underneath. I've sort of got to let this off a little bit, just so this uh, tips back in the direction I can push it treading carefully this with the handsaw once this is off should come off all right 
I'll stop videoing because nothing else to see as I take chunks down. Can't use the chainsaw because it's sitting back where I couldn't push it with the free hand. But on this one, I just feel more comfortable with the hand so that'll go now Okay, I'll swing back, stop the stop the video. Thanks for watching. This is all raw obviously but woodpecker damage, woodpecker holes all the way through it. Going after bugs and what have you. And this is where it, when I shook it before it looked like the worst the most biggest part of the wobble was it was, was sort of here and now I've come around this side I can see it's rotten all the way through but this is the weakest point I think